It took a while for the process to get started. How to hold her, how to burp her. The loads just come out and I was like, okay, great, obviously. And then the contractions kicked in. Lying across the ball like I was told by the midwife. Yes, you know, casually, let's just get you ready and take you down to the delivery room. Even Aaron was so like baffled. He was like, what? Quick, take photos. We just didn't expect it to go that quickly. Hey guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So this is the first video that I am doing post pregnancy, which is weird because I would think that my first one coming back would be, you know, a fitness video, but I thought it'd be best if I sit down and just do a labor talk video because that's something that's been highly requested. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. And of course, any questions, please let me know in the comments below. So before we start, obviously every single pregnancy is different. So I just want to say that this is just my experience. And I have to say I was super, super lucky with my delivery. I think in total it took like 10 hours. So I was really thankful for that. And obviously when I explain it, you'll see that my journey wasn't that bad. So I cannot complain at all. Um, before we start, I have to say that I actually was induced for this pregnancy. I really wanted to go naturally, but sadly, that wasn't the case. Here in Portugal, they don't really like you to go over 40 weeks of pregnancy. And as much as I thought I was gonna come early, if you guys have seen the previous vlogs, I thought that I was gonna come, you know, about 38, 39 weeks, but she just didn't wanna come out. She decided to stay in there and we got to 40 weeks and my doctor just wanted her to come out just for the safety because she was getting big. Um, I mean, I think she's a small baby, but here they think she's a big baby. But anyway, I was induced at 40 weeks and four days. So I went in on the Tuesday and in my head, I thought, you know, from all the stories that I've heard from other people, you know, including my mom and my best friend, it takes normally like two days for you to have the baby. So I was like, cool, going in on Tuesday, probably won't have it till Thursday. But that absolutely was not the case here in Portugal. They definitely like to speed things up and she was born the same day, so I'm so grateful. So I went in at half eight in the morning, obviously had to sign the paperwork and whatnot. So it took a while for the process to get started, but around 11 a.m. I was given this like little pill to take. I thought that was not how it worked here, but you literally put a pill at the side of your mouth, let it dissolve. And I thought, cool, let's get the process going, but nothing happened at all for about four hours. And um, I was checked to see if I was dilated. So I started at, I think, three centimeters. When it got to three o'clock, I was still three centimeters. Nothing had changed. So they were like, let's give you another pill. And I was like, okay, fab, let's do another one. And I'm gonna get on my birthing ball, start doing my bouncing because, you know, I've been doing that the whole time and thought that it would help. So bouncing on my ball, and um, all of a sudden my waters just broke. And I think it took about two hours after the second pill, so it's about five o'clock now. Um, sorry, Eva's making a noise, but she's fine. Um, so around that time, about five o'clock, the waters broke, there was so much water. I thought it was just gonna be a trickle, but loads, sorry, I'm going into detail, loads just come out and I was like, okay, great. Obviously now we're really starting. So that was about five o'clock. I then was checked again. But to my surprise, it was still three centimeters, my cervix, nothing had changed. And by this point, I still hadn't taken anything. I was just letting everything naturally occur. Um, and then the contractions kicked in and my God, did they hurt. I thought that I could handle it and I thought I'd be fine. I thought they were gonna be like the Braxton Hicks ones, didn't feel them at all. And yeah, I thought I'd be able to ride it out and I'd be fine, but I honestly just could not cope. The pain was so intense and I was getting them like every minute and I was hanging on to Aaron. I was, you know, lying across the ball like I was told by the midwife. I was rocking my hips back and forth, but it just got so intense. Honestly, I just couldn't cope with the pain and I really, really, really didn't want an epidural. I mean, you guys know if you've watched my videos and stuff, I've been very open by saying I want to make this as natural as possible, but the pain was just too much. I had to get an epidural and I was crying at this point. Um, Aaron was doing amazing, trying to support me and calm me down. And I think even he was like, okay, this is like, she needs an epidural now. Like we need to get you one. So I think it got to about seven o'clock. So bearing in mind, my water broke at five and I was going for quite a few hours. I mean, not that long, obviously, but I was going and um, had my epidural about seven, I think it was. So the guy come in, he was so lovely, made me feel really at ease because I was really scared to get it, you know, you hear all these horror stories about epidurals and what it will do, so I was really nervous to have one, but the guy was really reassuring. The midwife was lovely calming me down and Aaron was amazing, sitting there holding my hand. 
So dealt with the contractions that were coming, had the epidural and instantly felt relief. Like it was the best feeling. I just laid on the bed and it just felt like I was having those Braxton Hicks contractions. I could feel my stomach tightening, but there was not that intense pain anymore. And I thought I can handle this now. So let my body relax for half an hour. And then my doctor come in and she said, let's, you know, check you. It's been like the whole day now. I think this by this time is about eight o'clock. So I'd only really had the epidural for about 45 minutes to an hour. So bearing in mind before we went in, I was three centimeters. And um, she then checked me and I was 10 centimeters. This was in an hour I'd gone from literally three centimeters to 10, which was crazy. But obviously at this point when you're 10, you're ready for the baby. So me and Aaron were like in utter shock looking at each other. I was like, what, well, I'm ready to have Eva now. Um, so my doctor was like, yes, you know, casually, let's just get you ready and take you down to the delivery room. So um, they got me ready. And literally I think within half an hour, 45 minutes, I was taken to the delivery room. They topped up my epidural a little bit, but they're not too much because they wanted me to still feel the contractions. and I obviously wanted to have movement in my feet and whatnot in my body because I didn't want to be completely numb. That was like one of the problems and fears that I had. So wheeled me down into the room and everyone was being so lovely. All of the doctors, the nurses, everyone were cracking jokes, making me feel so at ease. I got in the room and they were like, what music do you want on? They were putting on like pop music to like make the scene feel good. And the paediatrician guy come in, he was cracking jokes. So everyone was just in such a chill, relaxed mood. I think that just made me feel 10 times better. So I got on the bed, didn't even see Aaron come in. And then next thing I know, he's like there at my head. Um, and then literally they were like, let's uh, push the baby out now. So I sat on the bed and they just said to me, every single time that you feel a contraction, they just want me to hold onto the bars and push. So I thought easy enough, that's absolutely fine. So. This is where hypnobirthing really did come in um, for me because I was doing a lot of the breathing techniques beforehand. So it was really good for me to use those you know, techniques and efforts that I had learnt during the hypnobirthing sessions about pushing and that really helped me get into the zone, concentrate and just push. So held onto the bars, every time I felt a contraction come in my stomach getting hard, I just went through my breathing, gave it about four or five pushes at a time and uh, yeah, within 10 minutes, she was out literally 10 minutes which i even aaron was so like baffled he was like what and then they just put eva on top of me they were like quick take photos so aaron's like pulling out his phone because we just didn't expect it to go that quickly he's snapping photos i've got like eva on me in like utter awe um they then took her away did what they had to do and then um i obviously was just taken care of i was again so lucky i hardly had any tears or problems. I think she said it was a one centimeter tear, so I had a couple of stitches um, to really quick again with that, which was amazing. Um, didn't feel any pain, and then they just put me back on my bed, gave me my little girl, um, and I breastfed straight away, which was so good, because the night before, actually, I wanted to see if I did have any milk, so my mum and I were sitting there with our spectra of breast pump, trying to get milk out of my boob and nothing was coming. So I was getting frustrated thinking, oh my God, I'm going to have a baby and I can't even pump any milk out. But I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a hormone that gets released when you've had the baby, but I sat down with her and just squeezed and milk come out. So Eva had food, she laid on the bed with me and they wheeled me back into my room and that was it. I was just checked upon obviously every couple of hours, ice packs and whatnot, but really i had such a smooth labor like i ended up like texting all my family saying that the baby had been born and it was really special actually because it was my brother's 30th so the 29th is a big deal in our family um, but one of the reasons is because it was my brother's 30th this year so he had his niece on the same day which he's super happy about because now every 10 years his birthday will be overshadowed by her so as he gets older <laughs> so he doesn't have to worry about it because eva will be there as well so yeah, it was just, honestly, it was so lovely. I didn't expect the labour to go that smoothly or that quickly. I thought I was going to be there till Thursday at least. But, you know, it happened in a really good way and I cannot fault the hospital in Lisbon in the slightest. They were so compassionate, so good, made me feel at ease and they gave me such an easy and smooth pregnancy and birth for Eva. Even afterwards when we've gone to, you know, paediatrician appointments and even the aftercare when I was in the hospital, they were so good in teaching me, you know, how to bath her, change her nappy, things to look out for, you know, how to swaddle her correctly, 
how to hold her, how to burp her, because I honestly had no idea. I mean, even now I have my mum here, thank the Lord. She is here helping me, you know, with the baby because everything is just so brand new and I'm totally not afraid to admit that I need help in these situations. So again, super blessed with everyone around me at the minute, but yeah, that is my labor story, guys. I am so surprised by it. I mean, like I said, I really thought it was gonna be difficult from what people have told me, but you know, it is a challenge. And like I said, every birth is different. I think for me, the physio sessions and keeping active and healthy during my pregnancy, I think really did aid my delivery. And um, especially like the last month, I really concentrated with my physio on, you know, opening up my pelvis and my hips. Um, focusing on the pelvic floor, breathing exercise, I think all of that has really helped with my delivery process and even with my recovery now. Um, like I said, I had minimal stitches, I'm able to walk, I'm able to sit, um, do my Kegel exercises and I've been assessed by my physio already so I'm just doing a lot of breathing exercises to you know, control back my core once again. So, you know, I am doing a video on that so I will keep you undated on the post-pregnancy body update but I feel really good in myself and you know, I'm just blessed that I had a really good labour and I have a healthy baby girl. But I hope you guys all did really enjoy this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe on my YouTube channel. Of course, if you do have any questions, please do let me know in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And hopefully now we will be going back to a bit more of a regular schedule and hopefully I have an assessment again in another two weeks to be assessed if I can start working out once more with my physios, which I think will be absolutely fine because like I said, I'm really lucky that I had, didn't have any like damage or whatnot done. So once I get back into the things of fitness and stuff, you will be having a lot more workout videos coming your way, especially, you know, for January, going into the new year, there'll be a lot more videos coming for you. But take care guys, and I will speak to you all very soon.